Okay, welcome back. Got two spots to talk about. I haven't actually fished this first spot um, as much as I meant to this night, so I'm not going to really be able to show you what a full night of fishing here looks like in terms of what you catch. But as you can see, we're getting small southern stickleback on caddisfly as well as uh, typically you can also catch loach. I really like using bloodworm here, but caddisfly works really well also. So I'll sort of do a combination of both, either two bloodworm and one caddisfly or vice versa. And then as off catch in this spot, we'll also occasionally catch some uh, rough. And as long as you're using small Tiny hooks, tiny hooks. As long as you're using tiny hooks, then you really shouldn't catch anything besides loach, small southern back, and rough, uh, at least in my experience. But, you know, the small southern back are fish and the loach are fish that you probably either haven't ever targeted before. I mean, I think I had only caught them by accident while fishing for other things here at Tuba. So, it may just be that you want to have this experience of trying to catch these trying to chase down one of the elusive uh, trophies. And uh, they are elusive. Let me tell you, um, I don't know if there's things I can do to get more dialed in, but even just like catching a marker, one of these ends up seeming pretty rare. So it's an interesting, interesting thing. This spot's certainly not a silver farm. Um, <laughs> as you can see like I said if you fish here the whole night this is a nighttime spot by the way don't I, I wouldn't waste your time during the day talking about catching a lot of smaller non markers uh, this is just nighttime and this is why I'm showing this spot because we're gonna be pairing this spot with um, with our daytime spot where we'll be trying to catch um, a bunch of small white fish and stuff like that or um, shamaya and some of the other cool fish here at tuba that you can catch on float and the main thing is i've been trying to uh, level up my float fishing and i think octuba is one of the more fun places to do that uh, it certainly is one of the ones that i enjoy working on float fishing the most so let's, uh, since it's 5 a.m., let's go ahead and get down. I want to show you kind of, you really can just follow this ridge all the way down. And, um, and then we'll be ready to go. And then I also, and this will probably be in another video, but I also want to show you another spot all along this same ridge. I haven't tried it myself, but I've seen it talked about over on the VK site. Um, by the way, that the loach spot that we just left um, that is on the so it was down here right um, and that that site is something that I got off the VK site it, it's uh, it's a pretty established site for people on that VK Russian site in, in terms of if you're wanting to go for uh, loach and small southern sickleback when it's when it's active that's one of the main places I think people go to here I am blabbing my mouth. Have I gone past this? No, I think it's right up here, right? Right here. All right, this is our little, this is our little uh, spot. You've, you've, if you've been around for a while, you have probably seen this spot as well. Um, let me just put one line in here. Sorry, I'm kind of all over the place this morning. First of all, let me go back and show you the setup for what we were fishing for in that first spot. We're using 3.2 liters, tiny 24, 22 size hooks with bloodworm. And um, the other setup we had, which is almost identical, except it has the caddis fly on there. Okay, so that was for the first spot. I apologize, I should have showed you that in the beginning. Um, and then this is our second spot. And this is where I like to uh, try to level up float fishing. Okay, so 
This one we have at 0.2. We're gonna be running 3.2 liters on these as well. Um, size 18 hook with mayfly as the bait is kind of what I've ended up uh, settling on. Um, I think I have the depth sort of all different. This one's 1 1.3, but besides that, it's gonna be almost the same. It looks like I have this hook size at 16 on accident. I have played around with hook sizes some and you can, it does make a difference, but uh, I've sort of settled on 18 as being my favorite. Is that float down? I think it is. The bite right here is active enough that you may decide you wanna just fish with one rod. My, I think the sweet spot is two float rods, personally. I think when I do three, it gets a little too chaotic and I start to miss bites. Um, Something about just kind of like tracking it with my eyes. I can handle two much better than three. All right, so far we're getting roaches here. That is not the normal. You do occasionally get roaches, but hopefully that is not gonna be what we're entirely seeing. All right, so there's a sitchel. There's one of the fish that we're sort of after. I would say that's not the priority, but it, uh, it does come in. All right, so when I'm starting to see a lot of roach come in, what I'll do is I'll start casting a little farther down, right? Usually I will start kind of over here. If it's not the fish we're looking for, then we start to move it down some. I also really like using bolo and match rods. I'll try to remember to show you sort of my setup on both of those as well. They're very similar, of course. Um, but what I have found is just the speed in which I can get telescopic rods in and out of the water with some of these fast bites in this spot. All right, so this is one of the fish that we're going for here. Really nice silver for these black spined herrings. And once that happens, we're gonna go ahead and start. I love that when you get like an extra fish, like we timed that just as the fish was biting there. Let's see if we can get that roach out of the water. Um, where's our first rod? There it is, okay. And so if you sort of start angling these to the left, you can get you know, it will, it will the, the distance in which it can float will be a little better. But oftentimes the bite rate here is fast enough that it's just kind of nice to have the speed of the teller rods. All right, there's line two going off again. Right, we missed it, I was a little slow. It's hard to drink coffee and float fish. And there goes line one. Another really nice one. So, you know, I came to this spot trying to catch a really large Shamaya. We've done okay. We ended up with 500 grams is the largest one we've gotten. So still haven't found the trophy Shamaya. But honestly, the Shamaya are not as active as they sometimes are in this spot. But it's still been good. I've still been leveling up my float fish, catching a lot of other fish, which, um, you know, catching a decent amount of those black spined herrings typically means you're going to make a reasonable amount of silver in this spot. So that's pretty nice. But like I said, to me, the sweet spot is probably having two float rods when it's when it's a decent bite rate. I kind of make three work. And sometimes it'll just kind of be really fortunate and I'll pull. I'll pull one after the other and it'll just kind of work out, but I feel like I just miss a lot of fish as well which is gonna happen anyway with, with telesticks. Although it happens with 
bolo and match rods as well. I might have a little bit higher percentage on hitting those, but we do pretty good with, with Tela sticks. Kessler's herring is another really nice fish that you're going to catch here. I can't believe we haven't seen a Shemaya yet. I mean, they seem to be, I may have to sort of look around and see if I can find another Shemaya spot. If anybody's got the down low on the Shemaya, let me know. But I do feel like down on this side, in comparison to up here on this side, at least currently, we're getting a better mix of uh, the fish we want to be catching here. I love seeing that bend in the telerides when it's a decent fish on. Another sitchel. It could be that we need to go a little bit farther out for the Shemaya. Or it could be that we need to be a little bit more shallow for the Shemaya. Let's put one right here. Getting a bite on three. really like that visual of pulling to the side there. Very nice fish. All right, so let's try this time going a lot farther out with our uh, with our first rod. Just see if we can find some Shemaya for you. Especially using happy hour, but even just in general, it's a pretty awesome place to level up float because you're still making pretty easy silver now it's inconsistent in terms of how much you'll make because it all depends on the percentage of markers and the, which species you end up getting but I would say anywhere from 100 to 200 a day just from this spot plus anything you uh, you do at night is is very realistic so we threw that one way out there but we haven't had a bite yet I was hoping we might see on that first rod if we could find a little different track there farther out third rods getting a nibble whenever you see a nibble like that that takes that long compared to the second rod which just popped right under the nibble is typically the common roach in this spot the faster bites are usually the ones of things we want to see I can't even tell if the floats down I thought it was I wasn't sure but it was worth checking okay so you see how our our line is so high um, this is what can break your leaders in this spot. So you're going to lose some hooks. You're going to break a few leaders if you use the 3.2. And it's going to mostly be because of the eyed. You can nurse with like a little bit of luck, a little bit of skill. You can nurse a big common roach or whatever out of the water. But there's going to be some eyed that you just happen to catch in this spot. Especially early in the morning and late at night. Um... Yeah, you're just going to lose a few hooks. You're going to pop a few leaders. All right, let's go a little shorter, but back some. I just can't figure out where the Shemaya have gone. Maybe I caught them all. I don't know. That's also not drifting. Now it is. We 
we won't go too much longer. I'm going to really watch this first and second line. Now, to try to avoid the eye, you could, of course, go with a little bit smaller hook. Is there a fish on that? I guess not. Couldn't tell. But I kind of like, you know, pushing my luck a little bit. I feel like 18. I don't really want to go bigger than 18 because I don't want to limit the bite rate, but 18 kind of brings out some of the larger, a little higher marker percentage of some of these types of fish that we're wanting to catch in this spot. Another really nice one. And again, you see it got it got pretty far down here before the bite happened. I, I just seems like it's down in this space right now that most of the good hits are happening. See how long that nibbled? Common roach every time. I don't often wait that long. Uh, I feel like that's what happens sometimes. You just end up missing both bites with multiple, multiple float rods. All right, let's get one or two more fish here, try to, and then we will wrap it up. Wow, did you see how close that, f that uh, leader was to popping? I just went a little hard to the side. That was my fault. You don't want to jerk it quite that strong. It wasn't even that big of a, of a uh, sitchel, but I almost blew it. And I think one thing we probably should do is change the depth. Um, it might be that here, let's do that real quick before I wrap this video up just to kind of experiment with you here it's another nice fish though i mean i hate to change it because we're on a really nice black spined herring i'm going to actually go to like 90 centimeters and see if we don't see just a, a shamaya here or there um it's worth trying different okay i'm not sure what happened i didn't even know we had a fish on there uh and that's my fault for not being a little bit more careful let me grab my 18s. I can't tell you how many Happy Hook uh, 18s I've bought in the last few days going for these fish. We've also gone through an absolute ton, absolute ton of Mayfly. Red Worm will also work for some of the same fish in this spot. Um, but I like mayfly better. But if you're if, if things are slowing down for you, you could always put red worm on. Um, <clears throat> I've tried stonefly larva. I've tried several baits. Everything is, a lot of things are decent, but I think the mayfly has been the most consistent. All right, let's try to see like at least one more fish here at the new depth we're trying. I think 90 centimeters is more maybe what I had started at 90 to one meter. And then I kind of liked my results when I started changing to 1.2. 
meters. Um, but I'm wondering if as weather changes and as things adjust, if, if it's worth sort of changing the uh, depth occasionally. Yeah, and the nice thing about so many of the fish we're catching in this spot, you don't get a lot of nibbles. You really do just get fish that take your bait. And uh, we're about to get a roach here, I think. And when that happens, when, when the fish bite like that, it's so much easier to float fish on teller rods. Compare... <laughs> That's my fault. I, I'm just going too fast. I'm just going too fast right now. Plus, I had that way out there. Like, there's no telling what that fish was. So there's a way you can do it without jerking. This was a good example. Like this is a reasonable size fish. If I had uh, jerked like I was doing in those past two, I could have broken that leader as well. You really just have to, um, you really just have to sort of gently pull to the side to get that bite going. But you have to balance that with if it is a reasonable size fish, you can't be letting go. You can't, you know, you have to be one motion pulling up. You got to get the head of the fish moving up and then pulling it towards you. And if it's too big, you may even have to sort of walk backwards with it once you get the head above water. But you can't be uh, passive. So you have to balance not jerking like I was doing the last couple times, but you also can't be passive. Once that fish gets that second swim on you, if it's a decent sized fish with these little 3.2 liters, you're gonna lose it. And that was a good example. I, I'm, I was a little aggressive, but pretty much that was good. Um, and that's a nice Kessler's herring. And there was a while here where I actually did go to like 4.4 and 5.4 liter size, and it still worked pretty good. I think overall, uh, it's the best with 3.2, but it definitely cuts into your profit when you do what I just did, which is to have like two busted lines like that. Um, okay, so I do really like using the bolo rod here and the match rod. I'll just show you the bolo rod. I mean, it's very similar, obviously. Um, what line do I have on here? 3.4, so we don't need a leader. And we'll just do a 19 hook because I don't have 18s right now because I put them all at the bottom of the river. Um, and we'll go 90 centimeters. And let's just throw this out here and see if we can't get something going here. And then with these, kind of the same thing you've seen me doing, we really just want to keep the bale open. And when we get a decent bite, we're going to sort of bring it to the side and start reeling to the side. And for me, at least, that seems to get the highest rate of actually hooking the fish. I, don't, I really haven't been doing all of that... Um, I really haven't been doing all of the control right click and all that really just been okay there's a decent bite so I just sort of reel to the side just like you saw there 
and it works really well. We've been catching some good fish in this spot. It's a roach. Um, and so it's been quite fun. I, I, I haven't used bolo rods in quite a while. Match rods I always tend to enjoy, but bolo in this spot with the current and everything has been great. And after this fish, we will wrap this one up. Um, or after this attempt at a fish, we may not get one. But um, we'll wrap this one up and we'll go back to town. I'll just show you, obviously we haven't had a full day in either spot. And so the silver is not going to look great, but you'll see how the silver starts to come together. And if you really are committed and stay in this spot for the whole day and then get a few decent fish over in the other spot at night, you can be leveling your float fishing and if you need to, of course, leveling your bottom fishing in the other spot a little bit and still making, again, you know, I was making 200 silver a day many days, but it's safe to say that between 100 and 200 is going to be very consistent. So. I think we're getting a nibble here. You can tell when the, uh, uh, this is probably a roach, unfortunately, but you can tell when the drifting with the current suddenly goes away. There's a fish interacting. That's ah, not a roach. It's a little sigil. Okay, so let's go check out um, back to town. I need to change up some baits and stuff for the next spot that I'm going to make a video on. Uh, and this next place is going to be experimental. So as soon as I finish this, I'll probably go ahead and start recording that one. I have no idea how it's going to go, but I saw it on the VK site and I was like, hey, that looks fun. Let's try it. So we'll see how it goes. Um, always check the cafe, of course. I have in, in the past couple days when I've been going for these small fish, I have uh, seen some decent cafe orders for them. This is a nice Shamaya order if they were biting. By the way, in that same spot we were just fishing, if you use feeders with... Um, stonefly larva and other things like that you will occasionally catch blue bream white bream um, if you want to use feeders there it's not a bad spot uh, we didn't quite have a roach that big so nothing for us in terms of orders and let's look and see oh my goodness so that was 127 silver and we've hardly even fished half a day there but those black spined herrings are just so good for silver. Um, yeah. Not bad. Not bad to be leveling up your float fishing. It's not bad silver. And I'll show you kind of what I've seen. I mean, I may have fished that spot out a little bit. But let's look at um, black spined herring. We've got a couple of spots here on the U.S., And as those seem to be biting more and more, I think we'll, uh, I might, we might be able to get some more weeklies out of that spot if we choose to try to. Um, what's the other thing I wanted to look at? There's something else besides Shamaya, not the herring. I can't remember right now. Uh, Shamaya, it's all us, M Dog, all the way. But they have slowed down significantly. Um, we are showing up on the small southern stickleback. If you specifically want to catch these fish, then you probably want to cat use caddisfly. But. Um, and we can look at the loach real quick. That's the last thing we'll do. The loach, if you want to catch loach as well, I was having more luck with the bloodworm. So it's kind of like a combination of caddisfly and bloodworm, like I told you. Um, but, you know, fish that you don't get to see very often. So anyway, okay, thanks for watching. There's a couple spots at Tuba, and I think I'm going to do another Tuba video here shortly because I'm just having a lot of fun trying to level up my float fishing. We are at, you probably can't see it, but we're at 72% now, so we've come a long way in the last couple days. 
We're getting there. Sandwich bait before you know it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.